Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today is Saturday, May 23rd. Uh, welcome to another session of TNT. Uh, today I have with my tea, I'm drinking an uh, Irish breakfast tea, uh, but a different coffee cup uh, because one of our prisoners, Liz Day, uh, gave me this Thomistic Institute coffee cup. Uh, so I am drinking from today because she gave it, but on the back it says coffee equals being equals goodness. Uh, and I'd have to say no, no, tea does, not coffee. So anyway, but I'm drinking from it because it's a great cup from Liz. But my University of Dallas cup is still with me, even though I'm not drinking out of it today. Uh, but anyway, all right. Uh, today, I thought with being Saturday and being the month of May, and one of the, one of the people, uh, Fatima, had submitted this question anyway. Um, this question about regards with the rosary. Uh, the rosary, uh, the kind of like the history of it. Uh, why is it considered something that's constantly being recommended in the church, um, uh, how to pray it. So some basic things with the rosary today. Uh, that one, just a basic history, the ones that really promoted the rosary were the Dominicans, uh, the order of preachers uh, founded by St. Dominic. That's why we call them the Dominicans, but they're technically called the order of preachers. That uh, back in the Middle Ages, in a period when many people couldn't read, Still, there was not the printing press yet, so books were a, a rare thing to have because they were uh, uh, handwritten. Uh, that the Dominicans, in trying to help people meditate on the life of Christ, because many people didn't have Bibles, because there was no printing press, that they devised this way of prayer. And that with the rosary, there's several dynamics to it. First and foremost, it's about meditating on the life of Christ through the eyes of Mary. How did she um, uh, meditate on them? And when we learn how to meditate on the life of Christ through the eyes of Mary, we really come to know the heart of our Lord much better. And yes, Bob Pickett's right that you also find this little write-ups in our bulletins, uh, but a lot of people aren't persons that join us here. Uh, so that's why I thought, especially in this month of May, to talk about the rosary. But so the Dominicans, what they did was they came up with the joyful mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries, and the glorious mysteries. Different mysteries in at different times of our life of our Lord, that kind of the, the crucial moments and how to meditate on them. Uh, that So you, when you have the joyful mysteries, those are the early years of our Lord. And so it's the Annunciation, when the Archangel Gabriel appeared to Mary. It is, then you have the Visitation, where Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And in the visitation, you have the whole the spiritual aspect there where John leaps in the womb of his mother uh, because of hearing the, the voice of Our Lady in the presence of the Lord. Uh, that you have the third joy of mission, the birth of our Lord. Then we have the presentation. And then we have the finding in the temple uh, several years later when our Lord is 12 years old. But when meditating on it, just take the joyful mysteries. It allows us to really think about uh, the humility of God, the, the incarnation, God taking on our human flesh. It allows us to think about family life because our Lord was part of a human family. So what was that family life like? How was it sanctified? How did they live it? That relationship between Mary and Joseph, it's a great thing, especially for couples in their marriages, to meditate on that uh, and, and the presence of the Lord through all that. Or for parents, those who are parents, the joy of mysteries give you a great opportunity to meditate on uh, forming your children. Because Mary and Joseph uh, did help form our Lord. Even though he is divine, they didn't form his divinity. In a way, his divinity is forming them. But they helped him in his human nature. Uh, they taught him things. They taught him how to do things. You know, kind of a classic example. Joseph taught Jesus how to work, especially in the trade of carpentry. Uh, taught him how to develop certain skills. Our Lord watching Mary, uh, how in basic home life, the ways that Mary either helps set the tone to things or when she's preparing things, whether it's preparing food for the family or whether she's, uh, how she related to other people in the village. Our Lord's learning it. 
Uh, and that's why even thinking of these parables, how many of the parables Jesus taught did he learn from just watching uh, as a child? And so when we pray the joyful mysteries, is to meditate not only on major message, for example, the major message of the Archangel Gabriel appearing to Mary and her response to it, but it really helps us to meditate on then some different aspects of our own life and what we can learn from those early years of the Lord, or what we can learn in the awareness of the needs of others, like Mary going immediately to visit and help her cousin Elizabeth. So that with the joyful mysteries, a lot we can meditate on things that deal with the ordinary daily things in life. Then the Dominicans introduced what was called the sorrowful mysteries. And those are dealing with then the time of our Lord's passion, uh, that you have the agony in the garden. And a lot of people when they're praying these mysteries, some people will do what's called a scriptural rosary. And so when they're meditating on each of the mysteries, they may read some scriptural verse that, that is addressing that particular mystery. Uh, others, uh, other saints sometimes have written meditations to help people to pray uh, and meditate on as they're praying that mystery. So the Star for Mysteries, obviously we have the Agony in the Garden. You can meditate on that, that awareness of when one knows one is going to face something difficult. You know, our Lord obviously knowing he's about to undergo his passion, nothing more difficult in history. And so we can meditate on not only what the Lord underwent and his, his sweating of blood, the angel coming to uh, console him. You can meditate on the Lord's prayer. Your Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. But then we can also pray about asking the Lord and through the intercession of Our Lady, help me to, to love your will. Or if I know I'm about to face something difficult, you know, help me not to be afraid. Praying that, Lord, if there's another way, allow it to happen. But if not, I, I accept your will. I embrace your will. You have the, the scourging the pillar. You have the crowning of thorns. It gives, gives us a chance, not, again, praying about what the Lord underwent, but then praying about humility. Uh, praying about, in the midst of suffering, how to respond with love, uh, how to respond with trust, trust in God. Uh, and then, of course, then you have the fourth star for mystery, Jesus carries the cross. The fifth is crucifixion of our Lord. And so, how did the Lord carry the cross? What were the reactions of the people around him? We know that those that are ridiculing him, how did he respond? How did Our Lady respond to it? How did she respond in her heart to those that are, are ridiculing him, those wishing ill on him? And it can help us. How do I respond when I become aware of other people either lacking in charity towards someone, uh, ridiculing someone. How do I help that person who is suffering in the midst of it? How do I unite myself to them? And that's why we keep going to Our Lady, like, Mary, help me, help me to learn this. Help me to learn to have that same heart uh, that you showed to others. And then we have the Glorious Mysteries. And the Glorious Mysteries, the Dominicans uh, in design the Rosary, is the resurrection of our Lord. It is his ascension into heaven is the descent of the Holy Spirit upon Our Lady and the apostles and other disciples. It is the assumption of Our Lady, body and soul in heaven, and the coronation. And so same dynamics, how to meditate on these incredible mysteries of our faith, but also, again, our response, whether it's the resurrection. Am I aware that when I'm baptized in Christ, that I'm sharing in this new life of the Lord? Am I aware that, that life has conquered death? So when I'm struggling with, with maybe the death of a loved one, do I look to the resurrection to help guide my heart, to, to fill me with hope as I'm struggling uh, with that, that reality and that mystery about death? Or when you think about the Ascension, as we just celebrate on Thursday, uh, Ascension Thursday, some of you, those not in our diocese, you'll be celebrating it this Sunday. Uh, but to, to really think about our human nature, our, our, our life is caught up in heaven forever. And that's our hope that our bodies one day, after our death, our bodies will be re resurrected when Christ comes in his glory. And that, that we too, what the Lord's human nature is experiencing, we will experience in our human nature. And so to, to meditate on these things, or, or obviously with Pentecost, the, the descent of the Holy Spirit, as we will celebrate that next week, thinking about and praying about 
our relationship with the Holy Spirit, our docility to the Holy Spirit, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it, meditating on it, about each of those gifts. Do I pray for, uh, for an increase of the gifts or the fruits of the Holy Spirit? The fruits of the Holy Spirit are all the, are things that we all yearn for. Every person in the world would love to, to really live what we speak of as scriptures, the letter of Galatians speaks of, the fruits. But we also have to pray that the Holy Spirit will, will help us to grow in those fruits because then it becomes a greater manifestation to others of this life in Christ. Or when we're trying to discern God's will, do we call on the Holy Spirit to help us to, to learn how to discern or when we pray, do we call on the Holy Spirit? Uh, because it's that, as the scriptures speak of, this, the Holy Spirit groans within the depths of our soul, the depths of our heart. Uh, and then obviously Our Lady, we think about her assumption, uh, where she has gone, we hope to follow, uh, in that where she's human, our Lord having a human nature, but he's still the divine person, uh, Our Lady, uh, in her perfect response, as the spouse to the Holy Spirit, as the daughter of God the Father, as mother of God the Son, because of her perfect cooperation in her life, which you and I, we're trying to learn how to cooperate in everything with God and his loving will, uh, but we still struggle, we still fall. But, but this is what happens when we meditate on the mysteries of the rosary. That's the primary purpose of the rosary, is meditating the life of Christ. And then John, Pope St. John Paul II introduced then, uh, the, in the year of the rosary, introduced the five... Uh, luminous mysteries, which are really kind of the, the the public life of Christ before his passion. And so that's when we meditate on the baptism of our Lord. You know, we can pray about our baptism when we pray about our Lord. Uh, undergoing the baptism so that showing us the way to eternal life. Uh, then we have the miracle at the wedding feast of Cana. A chance for us to pray about miracles, pray for miracles, or just that sense of Our Lady and Our Lord together that sense of like now entering into the public mission, the ultimate purpose of the Lord, his hour. Or we can meditate on with the third one is the proclamation of the kingdom of God, the call to conversion. And we, those, uh, how am I aware of the kingdom of God? How do I try to foster the awareness of the kingdom of God during the day? That do, am I trying to pray for a greater strength to, to proclaim the kingdom of God by my words, by my actions, uh, but with those that I encounter and then we have the transfiguration of our Lord. Uh, and then we have the institution of the Eucharist. And obviously for, for so many of you, we're not being able to receive the Eucharist. There's one mystery to really meditate on more and more as you prepare to receive our Lord, as we start to have met public masses pretty soon, uh, to want to receive him with great love and great faith. And so Our Lady can help us with this because she was present. She's aware of so many of these mysteries uh, that... With it, meditating on these mysteries, then we have the aspect of turning to Our Lady. You know, just, it's that, that's why we pray the hundred and, uh, if you pray the original uh, uh, 15 decades of the rosary, until John Paul II introduced the, the luminous mysteries, it was also an imitation of the prayer of the church, because the prayer of the church is what's called the Liturgy of the Hours. And that in praying the Liturgy of the Hours, that we meditate on, in a span of four weeks, of the 150 Psalms, and, along, and knowing that our Lord every day meditated on the Psalms. He would have prayed the Psalms as, as a faithful Jew. This is what they did. Uh, and so when we pray the rosary, it's an imitation of that praying as we would pray with the, the three different uh, mysteries of the glorious, joyful, and sorrowful. It's really also that imitation of well, as we pray 150 Hail Marys, it's an invitation to pray the 150 Psalms. So it also has a certain connection to the liturgical life of the church. Um, and then those practical ways when we pray it, you know, usually we have certain days we pray certain mysteries. So on Mondays, Saturdays, today, we would meditate on the joyful mysteries of the Lord. Tuesdays and Fridays, we meditate on the sorrowful mysteries. Thursdays is now the day that we meditate on the luminous mysteries. And then on Wednesdays and Sundays, we meditate on the glorious mysteries. So this is just some practical things with the rosary, just, but to help us realize such an important prayer, and especially if sometimes we get into a routine of it, uh, and maybe like as a family pray, and we might feel like, oh, this prayer takes so long, or you know, why do we have to do this? Well, it's because 
we might fall into that disposition, disposition because we may not necessarily be trying to meditate on these central mysteries of our faith. And so it's just simply asking the Lord, through Our Lady's help, she's our mother, and as our mother, she's just trying to lead us to the heart of Christ, uh, to meditate on his life. As she, as the scriptures say, she pondered these things in her heart. Well, we're trying to learn how did she ponder? How can we imitate it? And so it just kind of, let's finish up our session here today. Uh, just kind of a basic message. I know a lot of you are familiar with the rosary, but sometimes it's good just to kind of reflect on it, try to see you know, how is, do I pray it faithfully? Uh, it's great to try to pray it every day, those who can. Uh, even if you have a really busy schedule, well then, maybe it's while you're in the car, yeah, it's a little bit distracted, that way of praying the rosary, but nonetheless, it's better to, to meditate on these mysteries and pray it, rather than not praying at all, because you say, well, I'm too busy for this. And also, because it's a chance to see, you know, my busyness, where are things that can make some changes, so I can make that time for the Lord, uh, and looking to Our Lady's help. Uh, so, anyway, that is covering the rosary for today. Uh, I see uh, Rich Rogero is asking also if I could talk about uh, Eucharistic ministers. I'm sure, we can do that another time. Um, and I just want to start a little Frank Sinatra while we, and I got to talk a little bit over it and play a little softer so I don't get in trouble with the, uh, with whatever it is on the internet about posting copyright things, whatever. Many thanks to Liz Day again for this coffee cup, the Thomistic Institute uh, that I'm drinking out of today, even though I will drink out of my University of Dallas one. Uh, that many thanks to the people of the parish for you guys joining us here today. And uh, many thanks again to my parents, to my family, uh, to the seminaries that are here, to Deacon Steve, who is going to be ordained a priest on June 13th, uh, to Brian Connors and to Tiago. And actually, we're probably going to have another seminary uh, joining us here pretty soon. Uh, uh, Peter Sheffer. Peter is going to be ordained a deacon in a few weeks. The same ordination that... Uh, Deacon Steve's be ordained a priest. Uh, Peter's going to be ordained a deacon. So it's going to be pretty exciting for our diocese to have more men entering into uh, the clerical life, into the life of the church as priest and deacon, so that we can all the more receive our Lord in the sacraments. Have a wonderful day, everyone, uh, and we'll see you on Monday. Bye.